task, however, is no imagination. It is the actual state of affairs in Nigeria's rapidly expanding ICT industry. Nigeria has come a long way. The Federal Republic of Nigeria is a tropical country on the West African coast along the Gulf of Guinea with the Republic of Benin to the west, Niger to the north, Chad to the northeast and Cameroon to the east and southeast. Nigeria covers an area of some 923,769 square kilometers and situated between latitudes 4 degrees and 14 degrees north of the equator. The vegetation ranges from rainforests in the south through deciduous forests to grassroots dotted with shrubs, which finally shades into the dry desert regions and dotted with plenty of hills and mountains. The two major rivers transversing the country are rivers Niger and Benue in a confluence at Lukoja, from where they flow through a series of creeks in the Delta region into the Atlantic Ocean. Without a doubt, the world as we know it today is shaped by advancement in the field of information and communication technology ICT. The relevance of ICT to the development of individual, organizations, nations and the entire world cannot be overemphasized. Thankfully, the Nigerian government has come to realize the fact that no modern economy can be sustained without ICT and has adapted technology as an essential element for growth and social economic development. The result is that Nigeria is now in a prime position in Africa as the number one digital mobile GSM country in Africa and among the fastest growing telecom markets in the world, the number one in telecom regulation in Africa, the number one fixed wireless country in Africa the number one for low international core tariff in Africa, the number one in lowest cost of SIM parks in Africa, the number one in enabling laws and regulations in Africa, the number one in revenue per user, the number one transparent spectrum auctioning in Africa, the number one in consumer education and empowerment in Africa, and the number one liberalized market in Africa. Indeed, experts concede that access to information communication technology ICT is critical to the development of all aspects of a nation economy, including manufacturing, healthcare, banking, education, agriculture, and government. My vision of what I call telecom industry is a situation where Everybody is using the resources of telecoms without knowing what they are doing. I mean, if you call a taxi driver and he answers you and he calls another person somewhere, I'm busy, you can go this and, and my grandmother in the village is enjoying YouTube, watching, you know, the movement of her grandchild who is in, in New York. And the, the child is crying, and my grandmother is hearing and seeing the child. Yes, I mean, that was the vision. Historically, communications development in Nigeria can be traced to 1851 when the British Post Office established its postal branch in the country. The first direct telegraph services between Lagos and London began in September 1886 using submarine cables by the African District Telegraphy Company Limited and the Cable and Wireless Company of London. From 1946, the Post and Telegraph Department p t began more purposeful development of the national network in a move that appeared to have a slight of focus 
and purpose other than that of telecommunications provision for governance alone. By 1950, the country had 98 exchanges with 15,063 telephone instruments. With increase in commerce came the demand for more efficient and effective communication and the need to expand telecommunications network. At independence, along with pride in status and problems of self-government, was the gradual takeover of the reins of management of strategic government establishment, including the PRT. The focus of attention of the first plan, 1962 to 1968, was the expansion of the network to meet the needs of fledging commercial and industrial sectors. The specific objectives included installation of additional 60,000 telephone lines to bring the total number of lines to 90,000 by the end of the decade, expansion of trunk dialing facilities to link the major urban centers that were then springing up, and establishment of the Nigerian External Telecommunication and ET Limited. One highlight of this fourth period was the merger of the telecommunications arm of the Department of Post and Telecommunications with the Nigerian External Telecommunications and ET to form in 1985 the Nigerian Telecommunications Limited, NITO, a limited liability company to administer both internal and external telecommunications services in Nigeria. During this period, some organizations have ventured out developing their own networks. The greatest achievements are those of the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, which in 1990 installed a digital communication network regarded as the largest in Africa. The GSM story. Niger was at the center of it all. You know, we had a monopoly. Niger was the only service provider. It was a government monopoly. And because it was government monopoly, the process of change was very difficult. Even after we had identified that we needed change, it was almost, it was getting almost impossible to get the change. When the chief Olusegun Obasanjo government came in 1999, he restructured the NCC by appointing a new CEO in 2000 and a board of commissioners that changed the story. Many Nigerians could be forgiven for thinking that the Nigerian Communications Commission, NCC, was established only in 2000. On the contrary, the law establishing Nigerian's Telecom Regulatory Authority, the NCC, was instituted via Decree 75 of 1992. The commission was later inaugurated in 1993. That change was in 1993. The one you know that everybody talks about is in 2001 or 2000, that the GSM is what you will talk about. But the foundation was laid in 1993. The only mention the commission got in the press and in conversation among the generality of people was how the former monopoly phone provider, NITO, was undermining the NCC and usurping powers of the NCC and dictating the fate of the private telephone operators. Before you can dial on telephone in those days, you must get a dial tone. The dial tone issue became so much of a crisis that that my cousin had to employ me for one month to come to his office to come and help to come and be helping him to get the alto. What I would just do is I carry the telephone, I put it in my ear, I wait. When the alto comes, then I either dial for him, I gave it to him to dial. Because getting the alto was delaying his work and he was ready to pay me to come and get him to, to help him get the alto. I think that's a good picture of what it was. The historic digital mobile licensing round came at the heels of telecoms deregulation in Nigeria. The auction commenced on January 17 and ended on January 19, 2001. This licensing regime ushered in the ubiquitous GSM, which consequently changed the face of the telecoms landscape in Africa and made Nigeria the haven for telecommunications investors. The industry was opened up by 
the fact that the kind of liberalization we adopted was not the best, but it was certainly good. We enabled private sector to build their networks, to manage their networks, to do their business. When the mobile phone operators launched services in 2001, many Nigerians considered the entry price and tariffs as too high. There were stringent calls for the operators to be sanctioned or that the digital mobile licenses, DMLSs, should be withdrawn. The NCC assured Nigerians that competition would eventually force the operators to climb down from the mountaintop rates of per minute billing. Capacity availability Competition, driving down costs, and innovation and creativity via these other pieces of technology that are coming up. That's why there must be no legislation or no attempt to regulate creativity, to regulate technology, no. Today, competition and innovations have been a major driver of the industry as it is determining the rate operators charge their subscribers. From a mere 450,000 active subscribers in 2001, there is an estimated 148 million active lines. At the end of this year, there will be at least 150 million according to industry watches. Moreover, with better regulation of voice over internet protocol, VOIP, growth in the number and scale of internet service providers, ISPSs, and the new Spectrum licensing regime, the market is definitely much more robust. When we allow IC to penetrate every nook and cranny of this country in terms of infrastructure, then we will see ICT boosting productivity in every sector of the economy. Importantly, the NCC has given Nigerians a voice in determining the kind of service they get. Today, GSM phones beep almost every palm, pocket, handbags, offices, parties, school hostels, bay parlors, etc. Just listen to the numerous ringing tones coming from GSM phones. We, many of us, did not expect what we eventually got. All our projections were, were far below what eventually uh, you know emerged we were we we're talking in, in terms of small numbers because that is the way we were thinking in those days we were we were opening telephone exchanges of 10,000 lines and it was a big deal oh it was a big deal today we are talking of millions in those days we we're talking of thousands in addition to facilitate the penetration of internet services the Commission has licensed several internet service provider ISPs and has further encouraged the spread of internet access by initiating a class licensing regime to simplify authorization processes for cyber cafes and telecenters. The Commission has also facilitated the establishment of an internet exchange point for Nigeria, which is now fully operational. Nigeria has thus become one of the most desired investment destinations for ICT in Africa. Broadband infrastructure in its ubiquity means broadband internet in its ubiquity and internet means platform for access to knowledge. So broadband in its ubiquity means access to knowledge in its ubiquity. Access to knowledge in its ubiquity means productivity in ubiquity. Major players in the market Airtel Nigeria, MTN Nigeria, Global.com, Atisalat, Intel, Social Economic Impact. The great improvement in access to telecoms in the country has had a positive impact on virtually all facets of life in the country, political, social, as well as economic. Ownership of phones now cuts across the various social classes, opening good opportunities for the e-health, e-education, e-security, e-commerce and e-banking in the country. 
Before now, or before the advent of ICT, if you had an account in a particular branch of a bank and you wanted to cash a check, you needed to go to that branch of that bank. Interbranch connectivity was new. And therefore, um, things were branch specific. But today, with electronic banking, with broadband connectivity or piping, or optic fiber connectivity or visa connectivity between the branches of a bank, you can say that there's a seamless connection or seamless link of all the branches of a bank. It is virtually one of the few sectors that, that actually rapidly grew and enabled other sectors to also move up. For example, financial sector was able to use resources very well. Oil sector has used resources very well. Um, and I believe that the entertainment industry also has tried to use the resources very well. Technology intervention plays a significant role in the life of man. And this technology intervention is about the knowledge base that uses other materials of the world, be it oil, be it crude, be it all of that, to be able to transform society. The beauty about ICT is the level of connectedness that becomes possible. Connectedness to people, connectedness to organizations, connectedness to information. And we've seen a lot of Nigerian youth leverage ICT to communicate and share information with one another uh, for entertainment. And one area which I'm very, very passionate about is education. Today, the telecom sector is a key contributor to the nation's gross domestic products, GDP. The sector today provides employment to over 3 million people, directly or indirectly, while there is a minimum of 7% increase in GDP. While in time past, telecommunications services were the exclusive reserve of the rich Today, it is available to a far wider segment of the population. As Nigeria seeks to take its place in the modern digital society, it is clear that efforts in this direction will be driven largely by the active involvement of the private sector, in particular the digital mobile services provider. As ICT continues to impact lives, businesses and the economy, experts say the industry is still plagued with challenges and cannot claim to be at the El Dorado. When liberalization came, we started growing. Although we were not really developing, when we started growing. Growth is when things are expanding. If telephone, if telephone number is increasing and we are putting telephone in people's hands, yes. Development is when we start commanding it, when we are the ones doing it, when we are the ones designing, installing, re-engineering, doing the business, collecting our money, investing it back, and it is being done by us. The e-readiness index of the world is there for us to, to see. From 161 countries, Nigeria is about 142. And that is unacceptable. We are concerned to ensure that uh, this trend will be reversed. You ask yourself, of all the money, of all the investment we have, both FDI into technology in this country, why have we remained in the bottom of the e-readiness index of the world? I'm not imagining that today I will go to my... Don't, don't use Lagos to judge, you know. I, I'm okay here. Access that I have here is okay, but when I go to my village, what am I going to tell my people in the village that I've been in here for 50 years and I'm coming back without having good broadband in my home? Oh, come on. It makes me want to cry. In considering the impact of technology and the growth and development of the country, we must thank people, of individuals who contributed, professionals who gave their role, and experts who engineered the revolution. The top 50 tech titans refers to individuals 
who have made a huge difference not just in their organizations but also in the industry and the country as a whole. This award is to earn our achievers, innovators and connectors while they are alive for their efforts in building the industry. We are not just celebrating these tech titans, we also want to concretize the benefits of their contributions so that others can learn from them and possibly build on them as well. Heroes of the Industry Engineer Olawale A. Igi Engineer Vincent Maduka His Royal Highness Eze Engineer Obunna Kletus Eromantu Engineer Ernest Ndukwe ICT Policy Leadership and National Achievement Engineer Titi Omoitu Professor Esson Owolabi Chief Don Etiebet Engineer Victor Hafner Shola Taylor Paul Osoro S.A.N. Entrepreneurship and Innovation Emmanuel Ikuem Austin Okere Funke Okweke Benka Adibayo Michel Elegbe Bola Akindele Shola Bikestad Stanley Jegede Collins Onoibu Biodu Omoniyi Pioneers, Moguls, ICT investors and venture capitalists Chima Onyekwere Mike Adenuga Leo Stan A.K. Bello Osagi Florence Seriki Demola Alade Komo Colonel Aigbeni Peters Cosmos Manduka Software and Local Content Champions Chris Waje John Tani Obaro Pius Okigbo Jr. James Agada Amos Emmanuel James Emadoye Yele Okeremi ICT Advocacy and Media Bayo Banjo Ibukun Odushote Lanre Ajayi Sunday Afolayon Sonny Aragba Okore Aaron Okudie ICT Education, Empowerment and Capacity Building Amina Oyagola Shola Afolabi Adedoin Odunfa Professor Karbadambata Professor Charles Owudia, Professor Oluole Akinyokun, Kayode Shobajo, Tim Akano.